If you guys have been using WordPress, you have probably at some point have heard about Elementor. Elementor is a free drag and drop page builder for WordPress. You can download it in the back end of WordPress and start building your website with it right away. Elementor is arguably one of the most popular page builders for WordPress. With its drag and drop functionality and ease of use, Elementor is considered the number one most popular page builder for WordPress. WordPress itself has created its own page builder to combat Elementor's popularity. So is the Elementor page builder for everybody? Well, it depends. And I hate saying that, but I have to say it depends. So today in this video, I'll give you a detailed review on the Elementor page builder. So in this video, we'll be talking about the Elementor free version and also the Elementor pro version. If you guys do want to upgrade to the pro, I will leave a link to Elementor pro in the description below of this video if you guys do want to check it out. But with that said, let's go ahead and dive into this review. So I'll break this Elementor review up in a few different sections. In section one, we'll talk about the interface. I'll give a general overview about the options and the building layouts with the Elementor page builder. In section two, we'll talk about the features. Elementor is loaded with features and I'll go through some of them and explain how they work. In section three, the templates. Every page builder today in theme comes with templates. So I'll give a quick review on the templates. Section four, we'll talk about the free version versus the Elementor Pro version. In section five, we'll talk about the price of the Elementor Pro version and see if it's fair. Next, we'll talk about the pros and cons of using this page builder. There are several pros and cons that I'll detail in this video, along with some myths that I do wanna address. Next, we'll talk about the verdict and what I personally think about the Elementor page builder. I'll give it a total score from one to five. So let's dive into it. Let's first talk about the interface. In order to access the Elementor page builder, you need to go in the back end and go under plugins and click on add new. You'll search for plugins, then type in Elementor. Here you can activate the plugin and install it on your websites. When you activate the plugin, you're given a new option to edit the page with Elementor. The Elementor page builder is pretty standard. You first select columns. Within these columns, you can add in elements. On the left side, there's elements you can drag and drop, such as heading text, image, YouTube videos, or general buttons. There's about 33 elements to use in the free version and about 50 in the pro, but we'll talk more about the pro later. Designing the page is really simple with Elementor. You simply select the columns, drag in the elements, and then design them any which way you want. For every element, there's three columns. There's the content tab. This controls the content of the elements. There's then the styling tab. This controls the topography, the color, and the size of the elements. And then there's the advanced tab. This can change the position, like adding in margin or padding, or even adding cool effects like motion effects to your website. The design flow with Elementor is pretty simple. The elements snap into place most of the time, and the builder is pretty quick and fast. When you're finished adding in your elements, you can then create a new section. You can also right click on elements, duplicate them, or delete them. You can also copy and paste the style. And if you guys do make any problems with your website, you can always go back into the history and revise to any changes you've made in the past. Overall, the interface with Elementor is pretty simple and straightforward. I have used many other page builders. I would say the interface for this builder is probably one of the most easiest to use, especially for beginners. Overall, I would give the interface a solid five out of five. The Elementor page builder gives you all the options you need from one location. You can add an element, change the history, and do everything right here from the editor. Next, let's talk about the templates. Many people purchase themes on ThemeForest just because the templates looked amazing. I've seen tons of comments with people saying they bought specific themes just for the templates. So does Elementor come with nice design templates? Well, let's take a look. I must first start off by saying Elementor doesn't really offer any free templates in the free version. A long time ago they did, but if you want free blocks or templates, you're better off using the Astro theme or the Bloxy theme. The Elementor templates are straight up confusing. They do have some free available in the free version, but you'll have to dig through piles of pro templates in order to find them, which can be quite frustrating. What's worse, even the free templates don't even match up to the other ones, so it's giving you bits and parts of random templates that don't really integrate well. The same thing with the blocks. If you access the blocks, there are many blocks available. However, most of these are only available in the pro version. I think there's only about five to 10 blocks you can choose from in the free version, and the rest are strictly pro. Besides the templates and the block on the page editor, they actually do have some more in the back end. If you scroll to the templates, you can click on template library. Now me and my team personally develop kits, so we have a good idea of design. And I'll be the first person to say that these Elementor template kits are not good at all. The designer for Elementor is adequate at best, and some of these are just flat out ugly. From what I've seen, it looks like they started off with some design initiative to start creating Elementor templates, and then they just quit halfway when they were creating templates. 
In fact, I did remember in the past, some people were complaining the templates were so ugly, Elementor started to remove certain templates from their library. I remember they had this really ugly barbershop template, and I think Elementor just removed it altogether. In my personal opinion, I don't think these are actually usable on a real website. If you want to take that gamble, go for it. Overall, it is cool that they offer at least some templates for their users. It's nice of them to do that, but overall, I would not use these on a real client website. I would give the design elements for Elementor a solid 1 out of 5. I think the templates are outdated, ugly, and are just not usable for any real client. If you guys are looking for nice design kits, we actually do offer 300 plus on my website, and I'll leave those in the description of this video. Next, let's talk about the features. When choosing a page builder, most people look for the features of the builder. This is important because it lets you know the limitation of the page builder. The Elementor page builder is loaded with features, sometimes too many features. The Elementor page builder comes with about 30 widgets, and there's a lot more in the Pro. It has a very simple live editing interface. It also has responsive editing where you can adjust your website for specific devices. And it works pretty well. The Elementor page builder also contains unique options like global fonts and colors where you can adjust the website globally from one location. It also offers light and dark mode, a navigator, a finder where you can switch between pages when you're editing, and even notes where you can leave notes in the pro version. It also has very interesting shortcuts like copy and paste or duplicate. You can also export your work and upload it onto another domain. Essentially, you can copy and paste your work onto other domains, which is really cool. The most notable feature for the Elementor page builder is probably the theme builder. The theme builder allows you to essentially build every aspect of your WordPress website, such as the header, the footer, single post pages, the archive pages, WooCommerce pages, product pages, basically every aspect of your website. For example, here I'll go to the footer where I can customize it using the Elementor page builder. Once I apply the footer settings, I can then display the conditions. This will allow me to display the footer on specific pages or the entire website. You can do this for various parts of the website, just in case you want different parts of your website to stand out. Once you're done, you click on save and the changes will be applied to the entire website. This essentially gives you no limitation on how flexible and creative you want your website to be. Elementor also has a lot of pending features available in the dev version of the plugin. If you go down to the Elementor settings and go down to features, they actually have ongoing experiments and future features they are working on. You can turn these on or off to see what they have in the works and see if you like it. However, this does raise one concern. Some users for Elementor are constantly asking for new features. However, this can be frustrating for people who don't use the page builder on a daily basis. For example, there was a period where I did not use the Elementor page builder for at least three months. There was so much to learn and so much changed. It was very hard to relearn everything all over again, especially when Elementor introduced the Fluxbox container. The Fluxbox container is Elementor's newest ways to add in elements. I don't really think this is for beginners at all. You can go back into the general settings and turn off the Flexbox and use the intersections. The intersections for Elementor are much more beginner friendly. Overall, the features with Elementor are staggering. I don't think there's anything that they've left out. They have dynamic contents, the theme builder, WooCommerce builder, post builders, header and footer builders, and just tons of ways to build your websites. I would give the features of this page builder a solid five out of five. I don't think there's anything more they can add to this builder. Well, we'll see in the future. Next, pricing. Pricing is always a big concern when it comes to users building websites. I know everyone today wants everything for free, 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 but developers need to make money too. Quite honestly, the free version with Elementor is very generous. If you want a basic website that's not too complex with features, the free version will do just fine. The free version allows you to build a website from the ground up with nothing extra needed. I will say the free version of Elementor is perfect for any user who wants to build a website, so it is pretty good. A lot of other plugins on the WordPress ecosystem have free versions, but they don't offer crap. In the free versions, they basically want you to upgrade to the pro. However, I do believe Elementor is generous with the free version, allowing people to build a website with ease. So let's take a look at the pro version. The pro version of Elementor gives you access to the theme builder, WooCommerce builder, contact form builder, and tons of other features. The biggest drawback with the Elementor Pro is there's no lifetime option, so you'll be stuck in a subscription and forced to pay every year. So let's take a look at the Elementor pricing model. The essential plan is also getting future changes, which is basically going to make this plan worthless, so you're better off getting the advanced or better, which starts at about $99 a year. 
The advanced plan will give you Elementor Pro on three websites. The expert plan will give you Elementor Pro on 25 websites, and the HD plan will give you Elementor Pro on 1,000 websites for $399 a year. So what are my personal thoughts on the pricing options? With the development that goes into these products, I think page builders are incredibly underpriced. Think about it. Ninja Forms is a basic contact form. That's all it does. It sells for $500 a year for all the features for just a basic contact form. With Elementor, you actually get a contact form builder included in the Pro. Rank Math, which is another SEO plugin. They offer their plugin for $45 a month. Now that's per month. So what they've done here is all these plugins are getting more expensive, so they want to disguise it by changing it to monthly to make it look cheaper. I'm not a big fan of this at all. And the next plugin, Brothel Press. You'll see it's $349. However, this is actually a Black Friday sale and the normal price is $1,000 a year. So personally, I do think page builders in this market are very underpriced. Now these plugins that are selling don't add much to your websites and they don't give you a lot of functionality or features compared to page builders, which are extremely complex. So now that I showed you guys the plugins, how does Elementor match up against other page builders or competitors in the market? Well, let's take a look. The popular page builder SeedProd is offering their builder for $600 a year. Now I'm recording this video during Black Friday, so the prices you see on the screen are not the normal prices. The normal price is $600 a year for unlimited websites. There's also Elegant Themes. Elegant Themes is a very popular page builder, but theirs is actually cheaper than Elementor because they're offering a lifetime plan at around $249. And that's a one-time payment. Next, let's take a look at Thrive Themes. Thrive Themes is offering their page builder for $300 a year, and that only gives you access to five websites. Brizzy is another popular page builder. They are offering their builder for $89 a month, which could be quite pricey, but I do like that page builder. I think it's actually really unique. So I do think the pricing for Elementor is pretty fair. Now there is another option. If you're looking to bundle hosting with Elementor, they actually offer a few different plans. Elementor Hosting actually has four different plans, and this plan actually includes the Elementor Pro with all plans. You can purchase the basic plan with one website for $10 a month, or the business with one website for $19.99 a month. The difference from these plans is they essentially give you more storage, but it's not too big of a difference. They also have the Grow plan, which gives you three websites for $23 a month, and the Scale plan, which gives you 10 websites for $50 a month. So how does this compare against other platforms? Wix is another very popular platform for making websites. They'll charge you guys $35 a month for one domain. That is a little expensive. Shopify can go from $19 a month to $300 a year. So Elementor does offer plans that are similar to other platforms and they don't stand out too much out of the norm. Personally, if you guys already have hosting, I would go with the expert plan, which is suitable for 25 websites. You'll pay around $199 a year. And I think that's optimal for most page builders. However, if you are building a website and only have one website, I think the basic plan will do fine with the Elementor hosting. You can get a year hosting for about 120 bucks and that includes the Elementor Pro version. It does suck they don't have a lifetime plan, but the prices aren't too expensive compared to other builders on the market. I would give the pricing with Elementor a four out of five. The only thing I'd like to see in the future is probably a lifetime plan. I'll keep this section very simple. If you want a basic website or e-commerce website, the free version will do just fine. If you're the type of person who wants to decorate every aspect of the websites, like the header, the footer, the archive page, the WooCommerce product pages, then the pro version is for you. The main advantage of the pro version is access to the theme builder and also some elements they give you in the pro. But to be quite honest, I never really even use the pro elements. They are cool, but they're not a requirement for building a website. The best way to understand if you need the pro is to try the free version. If you feel like you're being limited by the free version, then upgrade to the pro. It's quite simple. So that's pretty much all I have to say about the free and pro. Just give it a try. Next, let's talk about the pros and cons. So first, let me give you three pros with the Elementor Page Builder. The pro one, there's no limitations with the Elementor Page Builder. You can virtually design every aspect of your website using the theme builder. Pro 2, it's not an expensive option. The problem with Elementor pricing is kind of the culture. They constantly change it, which leads a lot of users to be upset. And when you do compare with alternatives, it's still not an expensive option. I'm not a fan of how Elementor keeps changing their pricing. I don't like it, but I still don't think it's an expensive option compared to websites like Wix or Shopify. Now, Pro 3 is a bit of a pro and con. 
The overall ease of use of Elementor is suitable for even beginners. However, the introduction of the Fluxbox container was definitely more geared for developers and not for the average web design user. This can be very complicated for the average beginner using Elementor. The good thing is you have access to the intersections, which is more suitable for beginners. You can turn on the intersections in the general settings of the Elementor page builder. Next, let's talk about the cons of the Elementor. Updates. The updates with Elementor could cause conflict. Sometimes minor updates could destroy websites. Another annoying issue is sometimes plugins might conflict with the page builder, but this is something very common with WordPress in general, so it's not necessarily Elementor's fault, but it's just something to consider. The good news is they have a rollback feature where you can roll back the version of Elementor just in case an update might have destroyed your website. Con 2, fast changes. I mentioned before, if you're not using Elementor on a monthly basis and you come back to it a few months later, you might find out there's tons of new features and maybe even the interface changed. This could be good or bad just depending on the user. This is quite common with Elementor and it could be frustrating. I myself was using other builders and when I went back to Elementor, it looked like a completely different new editor. This can somewhat be annoying if you don't edit your website on a daily basis. Con 3, the pro version can be complicated. Many of the pro elements can be simple to understand. You just drag and drop them and mess around with them and see what they do. But the pro features can be a little complicated such as the theme builder, dynamic contents, and a few others. With the introduction of the Flexbox container for first time users, this begs the question, who is this builder for now? Is this for beginners or full time web developers? There is also a big myth about Elementor being slow or giving too much bloat. In fact, WordPress itself has tried to combat Elementor, claiming it is a slow builder and Gutenberg is eroding page builders. This is simply not true. Most beginners building their website tend to load heavy images on their websites. Many of them don't properly optimize it, but with proper optimization skills, you can have your websites load at under one second with Elementor. I sell many Elementor templates on my website, and most of these load at around one second using the Elementor Pro version. With proper optimization, like using a caching plugin like WP Rocket, or the Seraphonite Accelerator plugin, you guys can have your Elementor websites loading at around one second. So I just wanted to address these things in the video. What's my final verdict? Before Elementor, there were very few options to build your websites. There was a bunch of builders in the market that didn't just cut it. When Elementor was introduced, they streamlined the building process for everyone. Back in the day, Visual Composer was probably the main page builder. And you know what? I've always hated the Visual Composer. Since then, Elementor has taken its place as the leading page builder for WordPress. I would give the Elementor page builder a solid 4.5 out of 5. It's a WordPress page builder that welcomes all beginners and also welcomes web developers with more advanced features for everyone. There is a secret war going on with WordPress and Elementor. It's no secret that WordPress has a negative sentiment towards Elementor and vice versa. With the introduction of Gutenberg, most users plan to leave page builders and hop on the Gutenberg bandwagon, which could happen. Many users and comments claim Gutenberg will replace Elementor one day. So what do I think about all this? Well, I don't think so. Six years since Gutenberg has been released, they really haven't showed me much. And I'm definitely not some Elementor advocate by any means. I'll go with any page builder as long as I feel like it's beneficial for my audience. So what's the future of Elementor? Will Gutenberg replace Elementor? Well, that'll be for you to decide. It'll be up to you to decide if you want to go with Elementor or with the Gutenberg editor. And only time will tell. Thanks for watching party people. Hope you guys enjoyed this review and see you guys in the next video. I think Elementor is probably one of the most innovative page builders I've ever used. It literally has everything, you know, it has a theme builder, it has a pop-up builder. It has so much inside of it. So it's like basically like an all-in-one. So you don't really need to use any other tools. So it is actually a great page builder and I do recommend it. The only thing I'd like to see in the future is them to maybe even create a beginner mode and then also an expert mode. Cause I'm, I am a little confused on who their audience is at this point. Cause I don't really think it's for beginners anymore. You know, I do definitely think it's for web designers slash web developers. So maybe in the future they'll introduce a beginner mode where people can start with it and then venture off into the flex box and their more advanced features. Hopefully they'll introduce that. Maybe they're watching this video. They'll even put it into a, uh, an update or something like that. But let me know what you guys think about this review and the Elementor page builder in the description below of this video. Until then, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.